This is a response to Steph Bot's video, Four Myths of the Free Market. His video alleges that in a truly free market, whatever that means, there will not be monopoly, collusion, undercutting, and planned obsolescence. I strongly disagree. Well, I might actually agree that planned obsolescence doesn't last long. But otherwise, I will address his four arguments, not in the same order. We will start with collusion and planned obsolescence. Collusion, first of all, usually happens when a group of people have an advantage or monopoly over a certain resource. Think of things like oil or the media, diamonds. When one company or a group of companies have a, gr a great market share of a certain product, then there is little incentive for the price-fixing partners to compete against each other because people need it and people will buy it and they pretty much will pay almost any price. Now, there is no reason for price fixers to compete against each other. They price fix in the first place because they understand that they are safe from outside competition. So until there is, there's no need they would compete against each other. Secondly, planned obsolescence. I do partially agree with him that planned obsolescence cannot last very long. Planned obsolescence is a result of collusion or, or monopoly, and usually planned obsolescence can only last if you have either intellectual property or some way to prevent competition. There's a reason people buy Japanese cars, and there's a reason people buy made in China goods. Sometimes people want things that are cheap. Sometimes people want things that are quality. So planned obsolescence can only go so far. At some point, people are willing to pay for quality, and most companies would rather maximize profit for minimize work. So planned obsolescence, having to sell the same item again and again, isn't always the most profitable thing to do. Next, we have on the table monopoly and undercutting. They're basically more or less the same thing, or at least they're working in the same direction, which is consolidation. I don't understand why he outright denies that monopoly and undercutting will happen. My argument would be they happen, they're very natural, and they're not always a bad thing. But let's address him first. Let's look at some American examples. Let's look at PayPal, Gmail, eBay, and YouTube. Tell me, is there anything, whether in government regulation or intellectual property, that is preventing competitors to compete with these companies? PayPal, Gmail, eBay, or YouTube? The answer is no, there really isn't. Yes, there are some patents they hold, but none really substantial to prevent similar companies, as long as they have money, to provide a similar service. Yes, there are competitors to Gmail. There are competitors to PayPal, there are competitors to eBay, and there are competitors to YouTube. But they come nowhere close to taking a bite out of their market dominance. Why? Because big companies have a lot more advantage over small companies. So unless there's some way you have to force companies to start out as some equal market share, there's no reason they won't have natural monopolies. And monopoly isn't always a bad thing. Take for another example. Look at American cell phone companies. Currently, currently we're looking at AT&T planning to acquire T-Mobile. In the United States, the four major companies that I could think of off my head are AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, and Verizon. There are a lot of other small local companies, but the major ones nationwide are probably just those four. Stefan alleges that if AT&T acquires T-Mobile, the remaining two competitors are going to be worth more each. No, they're not, because now AT&T T-Mobile will have a greater market share, meaning that they have more money, they will make more money in the short run, and now they have an advantage, because with more money, resources, and customer base, they could afford to take the risks that Verizon and Sprint cannot, such as they can hire more staff, they could spend money on marketing, they could pr possibly provide better customer service to 
undercut or expand their their customer base. This, this is not a bad thing. And even if they fail, they can afford it much more than Verizon or Sprint can to take on now this bigger company. So th this isn't exactly monopoly, but the point is it's a step towards consolidation and reduction of competition, and it's not a bad thing. I don't know why he outright denies it. And he gives these really stupid examples of how a company must go into debt to acquire a company. What makes him think that companies can't be rich and resourceful to begin with? So undercutting and monopoly are very natural outcomes sometimes, and they're not always bad things. And by the way, there's nothing, whether legally or in intellectual property, that stops small companies, small local cell phone companies from competing with these major four. But nobody's doing it. Why not? Because it costs a lot of money and it's probably not worth it. So it's not a bad thing that there isn't competition. But why deny it? 